And what was it like working with Russell Brand? Everything you'd imagine and more. I think I can probably <laughs> Give say us that. Some examples. No, he came into our editorial <laughs> conference and just delivered this sort of flawless monologue that had us kind of all sitting there going, wow, OK, that's really interesting. I mean, the, the fundamental point he made is that he goes to football matches, he sees people on the terraces, they're really excited, they're really passionate. He sees people campaigning against the closure of an A&E department or a library, they're really passionate. Yet when it comes to national politics, people feel like it happens over there somewhere, they're not involved with it, they don't have any say in it. And that is the key problem that, you know... I leave it to you guys to address. Right. Well, why did you ask him particularly? We asked him because we like finding people who the perception of them is not what they actually are and slightly changing that. The same thing happened with Jemima Khan. She had great thoughts about free speech and we really wanted to get those across and, and, and she changed the perception of herself through doing the edit. Yeah. The same thing happened with Russell Brand, is that he had been seen, you know, we last remembered him before he left for America as this kind of guy who hosted Big Brother's Big Mouth. But actually, he's got some fantastic pieces in there. Rupert Everett yeah. writing on gay rights, for example, was a revelation to me, and really beautiful piece of writing that I would never have, have read or, you know, we never would have been able to commission otherwise. So, Tom Brake, Man of the People, are you going to read it? There's a copy of the uh, edition, the New Statesman, guest editor Russell Brand. Will you read it? Um, yes, yes, I, I will, although from, from the interview I think it, it, it's clear that he wants a revolution, but what isn't clear is, is what that revolution looks like and how it's going to happen and what, what it would mean in, in, in practical terms. I think the issue about uh, making a connection between uh, voters and local issues, the, the A&E campaigns and national issues, I think it can be done. I'll give you one example, um, a, a national issue about improving access to, to train stations. Uh, a couple of days ago, I, I found out that Carshalton was on a list of stations which might receive funding to be fully accessible. Uh, by email, I contacted uh, a, a certain number of people, and, and within two days, we had over 400 people who'd signed up to a campaign to support making that accessible. So I think you can, using technology, make that connection between the local and, and, and national but campaigns. But it's about cutting through, though, isn't it? I mean, do you think we take... Party, and in that sense, Russell Brand is right. Right. Do you agree with that analysis? Well, uh, not entirely, but I mean, uh, where, I mean, we had Occupy London in my constituency about two years mm. ago, and what struck me was it struck a chord beyond just the sort of the usual um, group of perhaps anarchistic people on, on the left. Uh, increasingly, it was, dare I say it, middle class Tory voting people who, who also took the view hang on. How the, frightening the, for the, you? The, well, well, in a way, <laughs> from the whole political class, actually, there was a sense in which the capitalist system, as they'd understood it, was now working against them. And where David is right is that, you know, we're all of that generation um, of as you say, having a free university education, um, getting, being able to get on the housing ladder, which is incredibly difficult for anyone in their 20s. The only thing I would say is this. Russell, Russell Brown's answer to that is don't okay, vote. That's right. That's the problem. The, the, the trouble is, all that will mean, I'm afraid, is that the political class will think, actually, we've got to put all of our attention into people who are over the age of 55, which is why, actually, the, the, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of those people... Well, that's, that's, that's why... But he that, said he's been underserved. Like he said he's been well, underserved by the political class. So that's why, why I think the political class, and I, I, it may well be that David and, uh, and Mark are doing it as well, I'm doing some work with Bite the Ballot, which is an organisation that campaigns to try and get young people registered. I think b before they even vote, they need to be registered. So make that first step. Because if they don't, if they don't get registered and they don't vote in elections, as Mark has said, I mean, as politicians, I think politicians generally, they, they know who votes in their constituencies and tend to try and establish a relationship with them. And if people aren't voting, then there's a problem. Yours is I a very pessimistic view of, of, of life then for, for, for young people. It may be true, but it does seem fairly pessimistic. No, I, look, I wouldn't advocate not voting. I think we probably should think about compulsory voting and then at least we could see who destroyed their ballot and, mm. was, and was upset with the system. I, I wouldn't agree but, with but, that. But, but the, point, the point is this, that at the moment... 
the elderly are protected in our system. Yeah. No one's attacking their, their, their TV license, license their, their, their fuel allowance. Yeah. Young people not voting, yeah. left out of the system, yeah. and no one's... And that was a mistake, so wasn't it, by David problem. Cameron, to make that commitment? Well, no, you can understand why he made it. Yeah, well, all right, yes. No, 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 but, no, but the thing is, we are moving away from the paradigm of, say, 40, 50 years ago of class-based politics into one that I think will be more age-based, generational-based groups who, who are being pitted against each other. And that, is, I don't think, is a very healthy state of affairs. And my biggest worry is that some of the brightest and best young people, young graduates from this country will perhaps think, well, their future is best served elsewhere, and that would be a disaster. It's, for it's not just Clark. There is a workless poor all across our country who Russell Brand is also speaking for, who feel very shut out of, of a Westminster-based politics that commits us to sound bites, usually through, you know, through, the, through the news, but doesn't seem to really speak genuinely about people's active po uh, problems. I mean, Helen, do you agree with, generally, broadly, the discussion that the political class does need to engage a lot more with younger, younger people and their failure to participate in quite large numbers means they're <laughs> focusing on the people who vote? It's a completely vicious cycle, isn't it? So young people vote less, therefore they're served less, therefore they vote less, and that's the problem. And I think that your film about housing had this exactly. The one issue that I think preoccupies people in London and the South East under 35 is the rising age of first-time buyers. Help to buy will, you know, that will help a tiny number of people, I feel, at the expense of other people who then will see prices escalate. one that's, that's been about university education. Uh, I think what's patronising, David, is saying that all apprenticeships are useless, which is what that, you just... Well, I'm, I'm afraid that is what you said. Of them are. And providing Customer young people services, with an alternative, which is about apprenticeships, no and actually providing young people with Many the, the experience that they need to then take up jobs that are there, because there are jobs there. It's certainly in, 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 in London. Can I just say, there is this mantra, all political parties, Get them into apprenticeships. We need more apprenticeships. No one's talking about the quality, the length, whether you can get the to a job from it, and the fact that there are adults. There are adults doing most of these apprenticeships. Speak to the young people sitting in their bedrooms, not doing apprenticeships. We need right. quality opportunities. I'm going to say Russell Brown to all their constituency surgeries at the weekend. That'll be lovely for them.